Hello friends, welcome to EPG Partshala. I am Dr. Dimple Khosla, Assistant Professor in Commerce, Dyal Singh College, Karnal. Today we will discuss the chapter personality. By the end of this module, the students will be able to understand the meaning of personality, the definitions of personality, nature of personality, various determinants of personality, different personality traits, the personality attributes that influence organizational behavior. So, let us start with the meaning of the word personality. According to Fred Luthens, personality means how people affect others and how they understand and view themselves as well as their pattern of inner and outer measurable traits and the person situation intervention. In other words, personality refers to that role which a person displays to the public. Personality is used in terms of influencing others through external appearance. It is an internalized system which includes all those aspects of a person that are inherited as well as learned. Definitions of Personality According to Gordon Allport, personality is the dynamic organization within the individual and consists of those psychological systems that determine his unique adjustment to his environment. According to Kanuk, personality can be defined as those inner psychological characteristics that both determine and reflect how a person responds to his or her environment. According to Rich, Personality should include external appearance and behavior or social stimulus, inner awareness of self as a permanent organizing force, particular pattern or organization of measurable traits both inner and outer. This personality devotes for the methods of affecting others, reacting to others actions and interacting with others. Now comes the nature of personality. Personality in general sense used to indicate the external outlook of an individual but actually it also includes the internal qualities of a person. So personality refers to the set of traits and behaviors that characterize an individual. An integrated whole which includes external as well as internal traits of an individual makes a personality. Personality is that which represents to the relatively stable pattern of behavior. Personality has some basic nature which is as follows. Personality has both internal and external elements. It is unique, it is relatively stable, it is inherent as well as shaped by the environment and it reflects individual differences. Major determinants of personality. Various determinants of personality have been categorized in several ways. It can be classified into groups, physiological, psychological, heredity, etc. For the purpose of analysis, these can be divided into six broad categories. The major determinants of personality are as follows. Number one, heredity. The features and characteristics taken from the parents are termed as heredity. The study of role of heredity in personality development is very important. The study of contribution of heredity to personality can be divided into three major categories these are number one brain brain is a factor which is supposed to play a very important role in personality the structure of brain determines personality role of brain in personality formation can't be denied the level of understanding is determined by the brain 
the more quickly a person understands the things and interprets the more dynamic his personality appears to the others. Number two is physical appearance. A person outer look also has to play a vital role in his personality. His dressing sense, body gestures, way of sitting, way of standing, level of confidence etc. All are the means through which his personality is reflected. At number three comes the temperament. Temperament and other non-intellectual personality traits are distributed according to the normal distribution. Temperament is the degree to which one responds emotionally. Now at number two comes environmental factors. We all are surrounded by some environment which has a great impact on us. So only heredity cannot decide the characteristics of a personality. Environment is a broader term and it includes such factors as individual's own culture and his school environment. So let us first study the cultural environment. Culture is traditionally considered as the major determinant of an individual's personality. The culture largely determines what a person is and what person will learn. It generally determines attitudes towards independence, aggression, competition and cooperation. Each culture accepts the trains and its members to behave in the ways that are acceptable to the group. It is therefore the cultural background of an individual which must be taken into account for describing one's personality. School environment. School is an indispensable part of a person's life. It plays a major role in molding the personality of the children because a significant part of the child's life is spent in the school between the age of 6 to 20 years. The school poses new problems to be solved, new taboos to be accepted into superego and new models for imitation and identification, all of which contribute their share in molding the personality. Number three is family. Family and social groups have most significant impact on the personality development. In order to understand the effects of a family on an individual's personality, we have to understand the identification process. Identification starts when a person begins to identify himself with some other members of the family. Normally a child tries to initiate certain actions of his parents. The identification process can be examined from three different perspectives. How much similarity is there in the behavior child and his role model? How desperate a child is to look like his model? How the child actually takes on the attributes of the model? All the three perspectives help in understanding the process of development of personality of a child. At number four comes socialization. A person does not live in isolation. So his behavior is always affected by the people who live around him. These social groups play vital role in personality development. The study of this aspect for organizational behavior is relevant since a person always work living in some social groups. Socialization initially starts with the contact with mother and later on with other members of the family like father, sister, brother and close relatives. And the social group, these all play influential role in shaping an individual's personality. At number five, we'll study the situational factors. Apart from the biological, sociological and environmental factors, situational factors also determine personality. An individual's personality may change in different situations. The demand of different situations may call for the different aspects of one's personality. Therefore, we should not look 
and the personality in isolation. Although certain generalization can be made about personality, their existence serves significant individual differences which are further influenced by situational factors. A situation exerts an important press on the individual. It exercises constraints and may provide push. For example, a teacher may be rigid and strict with students but may not be with his or her family. An officer may behave with the subordinates differently as compared to his family and friends. Psychological factors. Studying a human psychology is certainly a different task as it is purely related to an individual's own mindset. So, the psychological factors which affect an individual's personality may be as follows. Number one, interest. An individual normally has many interests in various areas. The executives in an organization do not have interest in common. The organization should provide opportunities like job rotation and special training program to satisfy the interest of the executives. Number two, motivation. It is the inner drive of an individual. Motivation is a cognitive factor which operates in determining one's behavior towards a goal. Individual differ in variables which determines the inner drives. 16 factors that determine the primary traits are either he is reserved or outgoing, less intelligent, more intelligent, affected by the feeling or emotionally stable, submissive or dominant, serious or happy-go-lucky, expedient or conscientious, timid or venturesome, tough-minded or sensitive, trusting or suspicious, practical or imaginative, forthright, shrewd, self-assured or apprehensive, conservative or experimenting, group-dependent or self-sufficient, uncontrolled or controlled, relaxed or tensed. Five big attributes of the personality. There is a table which shows descriptive characteristics of high score, then core traits and then descriptive characteristics of low score. Descriptive characteristics of high score are sociable, outgoing, talkative, assertive, gregarious. Number two, cooperative, warm, tactful, well planned, neat and dependable, stable, confident and effective, imaginative, curious or original. Coming to the core traits, these are extroversion, agreeableness, conscientiousness, emotional stability, openness to experience. Now the descriptive characteristics of low scores, shy, unassertive, withdrawn, independent, cold and rude, impulsive, careless and irresponsible, nervous, self-doubting, moody, dull, unimaginative and literal minded. Now comes the other personality attributes. Number first it is self-monitoring. Self-monitoring is the extent to which people try to control the way they present themselves to others. High self-monitors want their behavior to be socially acceptable and are attuned to any social cues that signals appropriate or inappropriate behaviors. They strive to behave in a situational appropriate manner, for example, if the people are in a meeting and see others making suggestions, they will start giving suggestions as well. They are also good at managing the impression that others have of them. In contrast, low self-monitors are not particularly sensitive to cues and behaving in a situationally appropriate manner. 
these are guided by their own attitudes, beliefs, feelings and principles and are not at all concerned about what other think of their behavior. Number two, risk propensity. People differ in their capacity of taking risk and speed of taking decisions. Some require a large number of information to take a decision while others are very prompt in making decision and capable of taking huge risks. So according to the job requirement, it is necessary to recognize and differentiate the personality with high risk propensity and low risk propensity. Number three, authoritarianism. As the name suggests, the people with this trait are highly rigid in their positions. They are the strict followers of rules and regulations and wants all work should be done in conformity of the strict environment. Their beliefs are strong and follow the mechanism of formal authority. They usually prefer autocratic or directive leadership style. Number four, locus of control. In a business organization, there are a number of events happening altogether. The mindset and belief of an individual regarding these events to be considered as under control or out of control represents the locus of control. Two kinds of personalities emerges out of it, that is external and internals. Externals think that events are beyond their control as these are directed by external forces. They are not completely satisfied with their job and also their tendency to remain absent from work is also on higher side. On the other hand, internals are more disciplined and controlled as they think that events can be controlled by putting some extra efforts. Number five, self-esteem. There can be two types of personalities on the basis of self-esteem. Individuals with high self-esteem and individuals with low self-esteem. People with high self-esteem are confident of their selves and fast in taking challenges and making decisions whereas people with low self-esteem are always in an attempt to take approval of their seniors for doing any work or before taking any decision. Their level of satisfaction is low as compared to the people with high self-esteem. At number six, need patterns. Individuals with a high need for achievement have a special desire to perform challenging tasks well and to meet their own personal standards for excellence. Individual with their trait are generally found at high managerial jobs and high leadership positions. Machiavellianism. An individual is considered to be Machiavellianism if he is a good manipulator. It means that the person is smart enough to manipulate others and things for his personal gain. Now this is to be answered that whether to keep these kinds of employees or not, then it completely depends on the nature of the job. If the nature of job is related to striking some deal or something based on commission, then these kind of people may prove fruitful, but in fact this ideology is unethical. Number eight, type A and type B personality. Type A personality represents a person who is highly competitive, very quick in doing things and cannot cope with leisure. They are usually the persons who are expert in multitasking. Type B personality is just opposite to it. They are easygoing, less competent and relaxed. Summary. After studying all the traits of the personality, we can say that a personality cannot be measured in isolation. It is to be taken as a whole, just as a house is completed only when the bricks are combined with the cement. Similarly, a personality is built when inherited traits are combined with the acquired 
traits. There are some points to ponder like fraud describes the phallic stage with the help of Oedipus complex and Electra complex. During the latency stage, the sexual energy is present, but it is actually diverted towards understanding the basics of the environment and social interactions. According to Freud, the genital stage starts during puberty and remains all through the adulthood. A proper balance is needed to be maintained between modesty and competence to develop a balanced personality. According to Freud, the human personality consists of three elements that is the id, ego and superego. Managers have to shape the personality of their employees through the interaction and interrelation of social and psychological needs. Thank you.